Hey, this is the Swedish Guitar Nerd, and today I'm reviewing a vintage guitar. Well, it's not vintage in that sense. The brand is called Vintage. And uh, it's uh, a brand created by a man called Trevor Wilkinson, who is uh, rather famous for his uh, guitar parts, mostly. Uh, for instance, my Court uh, G260 had a uh, Wilkinson Trem. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's a lot of uh, famous uh, guitar brands use his parts. For instance, ESP, uh, even Gibson have started to use Wilkinson parts actually. So, um, yeah, this is one of his takes on uh, actual guitar design, not just uh, the simple uh, single parts. Okay, this is uh, part of the Icon series, and the Icon series in vintage is uh, yeah, iconic guitars, and this is one of them, of course, it's a Strat. Uh, and that one's called V6, this actual model is called V6 MRBK. Why do it simple? <laughs> um, yeah. So try to repeat that 10 times really fast. V6 uh, MRBK. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's start talking about it. Uh, we have Cluson style tuners made to Wilkinson specs. And they are very traditional in every sense. Uh, for instance, they aren't very precise, as uh, isn't the uh, original Clusons. So it's, yeah, if you want these kind of tuners, that's what you get. And this is rather strange since he's doing, he's famous for doing good tuners and he should have applied some of his new technique into this. I mean, they can look the same and have a different, different stuff going on inside of them, but they haven't. So it's regular stuff. And, um, but yeah, they're reliable. We have a one piece maple neck and yeah, I'll talk about the finish and distress uh, in when I talk about build quality. And it's a rather, it's a rather thin, uh, no, it's a rather flat neck, sorry. Uh, I say it's a, a 12 inch radius actually. And 22 frets. Uh, it's made to look vintage. <laughs> Not only the name, but these are like upgrades. So you get more frets and you get a flatter radius. It, it's got m some rather big uh, frets as well close to jumbo actually a regular strat uh, size of the neck otherwise uh, and contour we have a poplar body and i can't actually think of a single other guitar that has poplar uh, for body wood um, it's very light, very, very light. So light that this guitar actually is neck heavy. And uh, yeah, could be good, could be bad. Uh, it's not as resonant as uh, other woods, I would say. You'll hear it later on the sounds part. Yeah. But it's the regular Strat style of body. We have a three ply uh, scratch plate, three Wilkinson W uh, V S, which I suppose stand for Wilkinson Vintage Single Coil, and uh, a Wink Wilkinson Design Bridge, which uh, might look as a standard uh, Strat bridge, and uh, yeah, in many ways it is. Uh, there are some differences though. Uh, for instance, the trem bar is, uh, as you can see, it's not loose because you can tighten it. It's not the screwing one, it's a pushing one. So you can tighten it with an Allen screw here. 
much like the ones that PRS or um, yeah, Fender American Deluxe, they use the same kind of technique. And on the back of it, well, there's no plate here. Yeah, you get it. It comes with a package, but it's not on. And there's five, five springs, and that's usually there's three. And uh, this is uh, a personal preference. Some use five strings, for instance. I think Eric Johnson uses five strings. Uh, Jimi Hendrix. I think used to use five string springs. Um, it makes the uh, tension, of course, a lot harder. So, uh, as you see, I've released it rather, uh, rather far here. So, to get this to even move, um, yeah. And uh, these, these things, where the strings go into the block the trem block, uh, they are um, positioned after where they come out on the other side uh, and uh, this is not what it looks like on a like a standard fender trem for instance and they don't uh, usually on a standard fender trem you see like the edge uh, the ball of the string all the way up here but here they go almost I think they are very close to the actual top of the trem and this uh, makes should in theory make it more stable in tuning because the more string length you have the more there is to move and the more you have to move the more you have to reset when you move the trem so uh, in theory it should enhance tuning stability <laughs> other than that it's a regular strat trem we have a five-way switch, we have uh, a single master volume, and we have two tone knobs. And it's not the regular strat thing where you have one of them going for the neck pickup and one for the middle. These have, uh, the upper one is for the neck and the middle, and the lower one is for the bridge pickup, uh, which usually doesn't have a tone pot. And, uh, yeah, I think they think of this as an upgrade as well, but I'm, I'm not sure. Leave a comment. What do you think? Um, I actually like the old design better. Whoa, am I turning into a conservative guitarist? Because um, I don't really use it on the bridge pickup, but I tend to use it. I like the thing with strats that you have separate tone knobs I really like that so and it's I would rather like remove this altogether and just have this one and I don't mind it that it's one for these two yeah and then it's a standard output jack so materials and hardware it gets a seven whoops uh, as you can see this is a uh, relic guitar or distressed guitar it's made to look as is as if it has been used and um, well fender is all to blame they were the ones that started this thing and uh, well what do i think about it i think it's stupid <laughs> all this relicking thing is just I don't think it's silly. Would you buy a car if it was like pre-broken with rust and like broken engine or something? I don't know. I wouldn't. <clears throat> and this is a cheaper guitar, so it's of course done in a more cost-effective way. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look, if you look from maybe from a distance, I don't know. You might th think that it looks rather authentic, um, but close it doesn't. Um, for instance, we have this strange thing that the, the neck is painted with uh, a jello tint on the fretboard and on the headstock and even on the back of the headstock, not on the fret uh, or the on the neck. Um, 
So the neck is uh, basically like a brand new neck, uh, nice and clear. And the rest has this yellow thing. And uh, watch my video for the Harley Benton Telecaster if you want to know what I think about yellow colors on necks. Um, so it looks rather strange because there's like an edge where this is like the regular tone color, uh, uh, wood color, and then you have this yellow thing. And then they have filed away supposed to look like regular wear but it's very obvious that they have filed it away some of the paint job on the top of the fretboard and then they have applied some kind of dirt and god knows how they do it do they take like the dirtiest person at the factory and every day he gets to touch all these guitars i don't know and do you like that i'm not sure and then they have faked this uh, cigarette burn. Uh, I, I suppose this guitar is mimicking uh, Eric Clapton's uh, most famous black Stratocaster. Because they have like borrowed some of the wear from his guitar. And then you have the body, uh, which has a very um, thin layer of black paint that's uh, not glossy, as you can see. And then they have, uh, I don't know, shipped away parts of it, filed away. It looks like it's, I don't know, if it painted on in this pattern. It's not like it's even filed away like it is on, for instance, the even so horrible Fender Road worn guitars. They look really, <laughs> really not used at all as well put some on the line and watch them. They have the exact same wear, so it looks really stupid. Uh, but on these guns, it's like if they have painted them with this, this pattern, it looks very strange. And then they have applied something on top of it. So this is not really bare wood. It's like a layer of, I don't know, clear coat on top of everything. It looks very strange. Yeah. So, uh, well, well, that's what I feel about Relic Guitars and this in uh, particular. Uh, other than that, uh, they even added some wear on the neck on the sides. They had s like ships of wood taken out all through the neck and it's broken in in a, a rather horrible way, if you ask me. But um, besides all this relicking, um, it's rather well put together. There are some things like the neck pocket is slanted l this way, so it's rather hard to get a good action. Uh, it's supposed to be straight or yeah, maybe even tilted the other way. Well, I worked with the truss rod and everything, so it's as good as it gets, but yeah, it's not really built like it should be. Build quality durability, it gets a seven. Well, durability wise, it's built to last, I think. It's very good parts otherwise. And the design of the strat is, yeah, this is, it has proven over time. Uh, playability, as I said, the neck is not seated the way it should. It's very tight to the pocket, but it's not really in the right angle. And that affects playability. And uh, even s uh, as well does the um, this added wear on the side. Because like the frettons are rather good. They aren't all the way, but most of them are rather good file on the sides they should use a bit of polishing on top um, but they have as i said they have done some distressing on the actual like edges of the fingerboard and that doesn't feel i don't know doesn't feel very good so but other than that 
it's the strat design uh, it's yeah it feels good as i said it's neck heavy and that affects playability as well but yeah other than that it's a regular strat so it's and the strat is easy to play uh, usually so put all this together and you get a six Electronics, well, as I said, we have uh, Wilkinson's proprietary WVS pickups. And I've talked about the electronics before, actually, with the tone knobs. But everything works. Uh, these are uh, good parts. And might even be considered upgrades uh, for other guitars. So, yeah. I give it a 9 for electronics. Okay, finally, you'll get to hear it. Um, I've turned down the tone knob a bit, so it's with these two no uh, pickups, as I usually do. And first we have a clean sound, so here we go. Then we add some overdrive.
And finally, some high gain and delay. I gave it an 8 for sounds. Uh, I really like the pickups on this one. Uh, it's real. It's it has the strat sounds really, really does them well. Um, so that might even be the best part of this guitar. I really like the pickups and the sounds they make. So all in all, it gets a 7.4. This vintage V6. And well, if you listen to my review, you know that I I don't like relicking as a whole, but uh, it's even worse on this guitar. Uh, it's a good guitar other than that, besides the relicking. Um, it really, <laughs> you can see it shining through the, the good parts of the guitar. And there is... Uh, a regular uh, version of this that it's actually cheaper than this one so and that has the I think it has the same pickup so why not buy one of those that's my uh, advice for you because uh, other than b besides the uh, rather horrible relicking uh, it's a really nice guitar uh, and um, it has some really good sounds so uh, Spare the money and do the relicking yourself. Make uh, because if you play it from some years, it would be your guitar. It will have the marks from your gigs, from memories when you toured a strange country and banged your guitar into something. And it will be personal. It won't look like anyone else's guitar. So, yeah, that's my advice. Um, yeah. 
This has been the Swedish Guitar Nerd reviewing the vintage Icon V6 MRBK guitar. Uh, hope you liked it. See you soon. Bye.